He's back. We are going to be doing things to Wilbur in this movie that should never be done to a real pig. It's actually not that bad. It is just a picture after all, so calm down. Keep your hair on. I'm going to walk you through several basic transformations. Uh, some of these are similar to Illustrator, but there's a little bit more to them. It's all pretty simple to do. Let's get going. So I'm going to click on Wilbur here and then go up to the control window, far left. And if you see this little grid up here, this is called the reference point. That will apply whenever you're using, doing a transformation. And what that means is what point will the object, or in this case, the image, transform from. And so right now, if I resize Wilbur here, this is the point that it will transform from. So in other words, this point will stay in position and everything else will transform relative to that point. And so with this active, if I go up here to the scaling part of the uh, control window, I'm just gonna choose 75% and you will see that's exactly what happened. This point stayed put and everything else transformed relative to it. So obviously if I change that to this point over here, in other words, right here, then it will transform relative to his nose. This is a great way to resize things if you happen to know the percentage you need to reduce or enlarge. Uh, most of the time you won't though. And so that takes us back to what I showed you very early in this video series is how to transform using the free transform tool. And that's great when you're learning. I'd actually stick with that. It's one less thing to remember. But I would like to show you how to resize something without having to get to another tool. So you'll see right now I still have my black arrow tool and I'm gonna hold down two keys. One of them on the Mac is gonna be the command on a PC, the control key, and then I'm gonna hold the shift key also. And so what that allows me to do is to resize the picture and the frame at the same time while only holding down those two keys and using the black arrow tool. So that's much nicer than having to go to another tool. So again, Command or Control plus the Shift key allows you to resize without having to use the free transform tool. So that is scaling. Now there is another tool for scaling called the scale tool, uh, which is located right here underneath the free transform tool. So if you find the free transform tool, you just click and hold, drops that related submenu. There is the scale tool, and I'm about to show you how to rotate. There is a rotate tool as well. So I don't think those really need demo time. They're great because you can be very specific with how you do your transformation, but most of the time you aren't gonna need to use it. But when you do, jump in. I'm sure you can figure it out pretty easily. Okay, so rotation. So I'm gonna click on Wilbur again. And then right up here, these are some really handy tools. Because a lot of times you just wanna rotate 90 degrees one way or the other. Now I am gonna change this to be the center point over here in the reference point. And then I'm gonna click on this rotate right. So it'll rotate 90 degrees clockwise and you'll see that it rotates from the center. Great, and then same thing with counterclockwise. And these two buttons are also amazing. These are basically reflect tools. So you can flip Wilbur horizontal or you can flip him vertical. And it's really easy to make those simple transformations that you'll be surprised how often you have to make them. Now, you know with rotating, you can also, again, this is just with the black arrow tool, you can just go near one of the corner points and you will get that rotate icon. And this means that you can now rotate Wilbur just what to whatever angle you want him to be in. And remember the constraining key, the shift key, will constrain the rotation to 45 degree angles. So I'm gonna undo all that, get Wilbur back to straight here. And that's all there is to rotation. All right, so on to alignment. Now this is 
fairly redundant with what we covered for Illustrator, um, with the exception of one feature. So uh, I won't belabor this, and I will show you that new feature. But I want to talk about the ability of smart guides to be really helpful. So if you remember, smart guides are those little pink and green lines that show up when you move things around. If you don't see those, then you can go to the view menu, pull down to grids and guides, and turn on smart guides right there. And so if I just have a few things to arrange, chances are I'm just going to depend on the smart guides. So I'm going to pull this up, and it may not be that easy for you to see this. Let me zoom in a bit, see if that helps a little. But as I drag this around, you'll see at certain points that lines will show up. Boom, right there. And so what that is telling you is that the image on the right uh, that I am moving is now center aligned to the image on the left. And so if I let go now, I know that those two Wilbers are going to be perfectly lined up. So if I grab another Wilbur and pull him over here, you'll see that the same thing will happen, except now you'll notice those additional little lines in between the pigs. They're little green lines with arrows on the end of them. And so that is actually telling me that there is equal spacing between the first and the second pig and the second and the third pig. And so without even thinking of using the align window or pulling in guides, I know that these three pigs are completely evenly spaced and on the same line. So if I only had three pigs to align, I'd probably just do this. It's going to be much easier. Okay, so let me zoom back out again. But I have more than three pigs. In fact, it looks like somebody left the barn door open. So I would like to align all five of these pigs, and I'm going to do so with the align window in this case. So I am going to mark all of these pigs, and I am going to go to the alignment window, which is not in the dock, so I have to go to the window menu and pull down to object and layout and choose align. Now, since I wish this was in the dock, I'm gonna add it to the dock. And so I'm just gonna, wherever I want this to be, um, I think I'm gonna stick it right here. So I just look for that blue line, which means it will add it right at that point in the dock. And then all I have to do is click on it and that will open the window. So I find that very convenient. Now, there are actually align tools often up here in the control window, so I will often use those too but completely up to you. Totally okay, for sure. Okay, so to start with, um, right here where it says align to, you need to be careful about what you are currently aligning to. So right now, align to selection is selected, meaning they will just align relative to each other. I want to start off showing you align to page. So I'm gonna do that, and I'm gonna say, you know what, I want these all at the top, boom. And then, oh, wait a minute, I think I want them all on the left. Ah! And so they actually are all still there. They're just right on top of each other. So let's just fix that. I'm going to change that and go back to align to selection. So I'm just going to pull the top pig over here. And then I'm going to mark all of those pigs. And I am going to say align to the top again, so they are all now in the same line, and then I'm going to distribute those. So I'm just going to say distribute based on the center. Okay, so that's pretty easy, pretty nice. So the new feature, this is all the same as I showed you in Illustrator, the new feature for InDesign is down here, which is distribute spacing. And so if I uncheck this, it will align these relative to each other, but instead of looking at a certain part of the object, it will look at the space in between the object. So if this is unchecked, you're going to get pretty much the same effect most of the time. But this is the part I like. So I can check use spacing, and then I can tell it to space these out with this much space in between them. So even if these are different shaped and sized <laughs> objects, I can tell them to have the same amount of space in between. 0.125 is great, that's an eighth of an inch. So I'll click this button now, and you'll see they will close up, and they will have exactly the same space in between, an eighth of an inch. 
So uh, now that I've got these all perfectly aligned, I would like to make them be a group. And so I'm gonna go ahead and make sure they're all marked. Then I can go under the object menu and just simply pull down to group. And so very much the same as an illustrator. Uh, one of the differences is though, is how the group looks. InDesign gives you this nice dotted line box around them to give you a visual clue that it's grouped. I kind of wish Illustrator did that. I think that's nice. nice. But now I can resize this, I can move it, I can do anything I want, treating this as a single object instead of five separate Wilbers. Now if I want to ungroup, to get back the individual pigs, uh, just go back to the object menu and pull down to ungroup. So you'll see the keystrokes for that are command G to group, and then to ungroup is shift command G. And obviously if you're on a PC, that's a control key instead of the command key. And so now I am back to my individual Wilbers. And so that wraps up this video. So a bunch of small things in here, but I think they can all help you quite a bit as you're working through your layouts. So next up, the effects panel.